Hi there folks, welcome to this lesson uh, from the uh, curriculum called Generative AI for Beginners. My name is Chris Noring and we'll talk about advanced prompting. So far you've seen as part of this curriculum how you can just be creating your own prompts but you're not really sure why this prompt works or how you can improve it. This lesson is here to answer that question and provide you with some basic techniques on how to get there and how to improve things. All right, so let's kick this off. Let's uh, dive right into the lesson. So the learning goals for this lesson, and I definitely recommend that you have a look at our text version of this lesson on GitHub. The goals are to learn to apply prompt engineering techniques to improve the outcome of your prompts. And the other part of, of the lesson is to also ensure that you can perform prompting so that it's either very random or very uh, deterministic, mean uh, that you pretty much get the same kind of answer every time you try to prompt. So there are a big variation here between maximum randomness and no randomness at all. Let's uh, just rehash what prompt engineering is. Uh, so the idea with prompt engineering is that it's a process, uh, which means it's a process by which we guide the model towards more relevant responses by providing more uh, instructions or more context. There are two parts to prompt engineering, and especially with writing prompts. One of them is to construct a prompt in which you try to provide it with the relevant context, and the other part is optimization. You are trying to gradually improve your prompt because no prompt is perfect on your first attempt, but you will try to uh, change that prompt by adding more context or try to reword it, for example. Here's what a prompt can look like, just to remind you all. For example, you could be saying, I want to generate 10 questions on geography, and that's fine. And what's interesting about this seemingly simple prompt is that you're already using some basic techniques uh, to, to author it. So one of those techniques you are using is context. You say, for example, that this prompt should be about geography, which helps to narrow things down. The other bit is that you're limiting the output. You're saying, I want 10 questions. I don't want two questions or 500 questions. Limitations like this really helps the LLM, the large language model, to ensure that you arrive at the response that you want. We'll uh, talk about six different uh, techniques. We won't cover all of them in, as part of this video lessons, but quite a few. Uh, I wanted to present them first at high level. First off, you got few shot prompting, which is your mo most basic form of prompting. This is you creating a prompt and you get a, a response back. The other principle, the other technique is chain of thought. And this is how you help the LLM to break down a problem to see, I want you to solve the problem in this way. This will increase the likelihood that LLM is actually doing, for example, calculations correctly. And you will see a, a, a example of that as part of this presentation. The third one is generated knowledge because it is important when you create a prompt to many times to bring it with uh, data that, for example, is from your company or, or maybe your other organization that you're part of. So if you provide data that is, is yours, you increase the likelihood that once you ask that prompt that it's actually going to give you a response that's based on both its basic training, but also your own data. Then you have a principle called least to most. And uh, this is just like chain of thought. And the idea with this is that you break down a problem in many different parts, and then you also decide on the order in which these different parts should happen. This can, for example, be very useful if you're trying to do machine learning, wherein it consists of different steps, and it's important that you follow these steps in order. For example, you want to fetch data first, then you want to clean the data, and you want to make sure that all of these steps happen before you actually train a mo uh, before you train a model. Self-refine is another technique, and the idea here is to ask the LLM to gradually improve its answer step by step. And lastly, you have something called meiotic prompting, and the idea is that you shouldn't really trust what the LLM is telling you. And the idea is that you question various parts of its answers to detect anything that feels like, okay, now it's actually contradicting itself. So that's also a very useful technique to make sure that you arrive at a correct response. So let's just see few shot prompting, what it could look like. So for example, with few shot prompting, you might ask the LLM, what is algebra? And you might get a response back in which it tries to explain what algebra is. Looking at an example of chain of thought, you might have, for example, a mathematical problem in which, in this case, Alice has five apples 
she throws away three apples, she gives two apples to Bob, and Bob gives an apple back. If you just ask this to the LLM, the, you're very likely that the LLM arrives at an incorrect response. So what can you do about it? Well, the answer is actually to provide the LLM with a very similar um, calculation and how to do the calculation. And once you do that, you provide it with that previous context, and then you can now add your question. The LLM is more likely to give you a correct response. So remember this technology or technique, it's, it's a very, very important way to ensure that you arrive at the correct response. Generated knowledge is all about getting that knowledge from somewhere, for example, about your company and insurance products to make sure that once you ask this prompt, the LLM actually knows about it. And this is a very good, good way of prompting in general, because otherwise you'd need to uh, train the LLM on a lot more of your company's data, which could be very costly. So this is a very good middle ground. Now, self-refine is an important technology because it allows you to improve the answers from the LLM gradually. So for example, if you got a piece of code, you can ask it to make sure that, can you improve my code to make it more maintainable, for example, or can you improve my code as to improve its security? Now, here's an example of that. So here you can see, for example, how we're asking the LLM to generate something in Python for us, and we get this first response. That's great. But if you look on the right side of this, you see that, hey, we want you to suggest three different improvements, which it's Copilot chat in this case, is saying, yes, I can actually suggest that you do all three of these. And then you arrive not only with how to improve things, but also an improved set of code. And uh, yeah, that's all I thought I'd cover as part of this video lessons. But as I said, definitely check out the written lesson as well for more details on these various principles. I hope this will help you in, in your prompting.